Winston Churchill once said, never give in, never give in, never, 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 never. Now, I joined the Marine Corps during my second year of law school and served as a criminal defense counsel and as a criminal prosecutor. But when I deployed to Iraq in the fall of 2006, it wasn't in the role of a JAG officer. In the Marine Corps, all the officers learn the basics of many different positions. So I volunteered for the deployment as a civil affairs team leader. In that capacity, I had the honor of leading a small team, and we were attached to a Marine Infantry Battalion located halfway between the towns of Fallujah and Ramadi in the Al Anbar province. On October 18, 2006, I was patrolling with a squad of Marines, and we got to an area where we knew an enemy sniper had been operating because he had already killed a few of our Marines. We had a reporter with us that day, and I had noticed earlier during one of our stops that he wasn't moving around very much. He was standing very still, kind of like this, which is a terrible idea, as you can imagine, if someone may be targeting you. When we got out of the vehicle at the next stop, he and I were riding together. And as we walked away from the Humvee, I said to him, hey, Jay, you need to move quicker here. Don't forget about that sniper. We, want you, you know, we don't want something bad to happen to you. Later, he told me that based on that, he immediately took a big step forward. And a split second later, a bullet came in right where his head had been and hit the wall between us. Before I could react, the next round hit me behind my left ear and it exploded out of my mouth, causing incredible damage along the way. In fact, the Marines around me thought I had been killed. And when the Navy corpsman came running over, they said, don't worry about the Major. He's dead. But Corpsman George Grant is an incredible young man. Even though blood was pouring out of my skull and what was left of my face, he was somehow able to perform rescue breathing on me and then cut open my throat and perform an emergency tracheotomy so I wouldn't drown in my own blood. In the face of overwhelming adversity and with complete disregard for his own life, George is able to focus solely on me and keep me alive. In fact, despite all that was going on around him, including the fact that the sniper was still shooting, in fact, he shot the Marine behind me as well. And this wasn't a nice, pristine, hostile environment that we just saw. This was a modern-day battlefield. There was dust and dirt and rocks and stones everywhere. And George was wearing 65 pounds of protective armor, like we all were that summer. So it's very cumbersome. But despite all that, George did such a perfect job in my tracheotomy that my plastic surgeon back in the States told me he thought another surgeon had performed it. Now keep in mind that George was only 25 years old at the time. And George had never performed that type of surgery on a human being. He had done it once in a controlled training environment for Navy corpsmen out of out Camp Pendleton, California. And he performed that surgery on a pig, so I don't know what it says about me, but that pig survived, and so did I. No questions here. So why am I up here in front of you today? I can't see out of my left eye. I'm missing most of my teeth and the end of my tongue. I'm sure you can tell I can't see perfectly clearly. I can't run anymore because the doctors removed bones from my legs to use in reconstructing my upper and lower jaws. I also suffer from post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. But you know what? I'm the luckiest person you'll ever meet. Because of the injury that caused these problems, I'm now far closer with my wife, Galia, than I ever would have thought possible. I know I'm far stronger than I ever would have imagined, and now I can put every big problems in a proper perspective so I can focus on what's truly important to Galia and me. Winston Churchill once said, never give in, never give in. Never, 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 never. I try to fully embrace that philosophy during my recovery. And I think it applies to anyone who's facing some sort of adversity in life, which frankly is all of us at one point or another. In the Marine Corps, they train us really hard to be tough and efficient and extremely resilient. Physical and mental fitness is a part of everything we do. But leading up to that deployment back in 2006, and Remember, I don't come from an infantry background. If someone had really been able to describe to me what it's like to carry two weapons and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, 
And as I said, 65 pounds of protective armor and conduct long foot patrols, five or six or seven hours long in a given stretch, all in 100, 110, 115 degree heat. I very well may have said, you know what, I can't do that. But I could, and I did. Because we are all stronger than we think we are, and we're each capable of overcoming the toughest obstacles. It's, remember, it's, it's important for you to remember that when you're having a bad day, or a bad week, or maybe even a bad month, and it feels like your whole world is caving in around you. The bottom line is, if you dig deep, you're gonna find resources you may not have known you had before. We are all survivors. We have all overcome adversity of some sort. We've all fought our share of battles. But we've all become smarter and stronger and wiser and braver because of those struggles that we endured. Maybe not right away. It's coming up on 10 years for me, and I'm still getting reconstructive surgery. And maybe not very easily. There's probably a number of you in this audience who are facing adversity right now and challenges in your life. But we've all bounced back from hard times, and we've all proven to ourselves that our spirit is stronger than anything that can threaten to break it. Now, the earlier reports about my injury were that I had been killed in action. In fact, when George first rolled me over, I was no longer breathing. So I know that life can be tough and full of challenges. But take it from me, trust me on this. Life is beautiful and precious and sweet. It's something we should treasure, not just get through. Life should be about celebration, not merely survival. So you need to take life's challenges around and fight through them, just like I did. And if I can do it, so can each one of you. In fact, last year, despite being shot in the head, I graduated with distinction from the Georgetown University Law Center with an advanced law degree in national security. I'm now an inspirational speaker and a leadership advisor, and this year, earlier this year, I just published my first book about leadership. All because I started laying out what's important to me in life, how I was going to get there, and because 10 years ago, I learned we are all stronger than we think we are. And I'm nobody special. So if I can meet the goals I lay out for myself, each of you can as well. Life changes, for better or worse. It all depends how you look at it. I choose a glassy half full, not half empty, and to embrace change. Because I want to live life in the future, not in the past. I've learned that through inner strength and humility and a victorious spirit, we are each capable of doing amazing things. I want you to think about that for just a second. We can do whatever it is that we want to do today, tomorrow, next week, next year. Also for me, it's been important to maintain a good sense of humor. And I hope that's the same for you as well. And that's just not talking about bad jokes up on stage, but in daily life. For instance, when I was in the hospital not long after I was shot, and this was early on when I was, it was still day to day. And remember, I did not deploy as a lawyer. I was there with an infantry unit. My father came in and sat down next to me, and he had a very serious look on his face. And I guess he, he summed up the universal feeling for all attorneys. And he said, see, Justin, even in Iraq, they know who the lawyers are. <laughs> that's a true story. It's tough love in the Constantine household, I, I guess. But I figure if we could laugh at what was going on in our lives at that point, you'll be able to laugh at whatever challenges pop up on your radar. So take it from me. One thing I do know is that you're stronger than you think you are, and you can each do amazing things and overcome whatever obstacle gets in your way. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much.